Good morning. This morning's reading is from The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Your word is the power that you have to create. Your word is the gift that comes directly from God. The Gospel of John in the Bible, speaking of the creation of the universe, says, In the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. Though the word, through the Word you express your creative power, it is through the Word that you manifest everything, what you dream, what you feel, and what you really are, will be manifested through the Word. The Word is not just a sound or a written symbol. The Word is a force. It is the power you have to express and communicate, to think, and thereby to create the events of your life. And like a sword with two edges, your Word can create the most beautiful dream, or your Word can destroy everything around you. One edge is the misuse of the word, which creates a living hell. The other edge is impeccability of the word, which will only create beauty, love, and heaven on earth. Depending on how it is used, the word can set you free, or it can enslave you even more than you know. Back in the 70s, um, you probably remember um, a comedian by the name of Yakov Smirnov, and he immigrated from Russia in the 70s, and he was real popular in the 80s. I love this quote. Are you ready? He said, coming from the Soviet Union, I was not prepared for the incredible variety of products available in American grocery stores. Well, on my first shopping trip, I saw powdered milk. You just add water, and you get milk. And then I saw powdered orange juice. You just add water, you get orange juice. And then he said, I saw baby powder. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, what a country. <laughs> Words are really important, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing more important than words, especially when we're using our words to comfort, to love, to encourage. Those are gifts that we can all share and we can all share very freely. They cost us absolutely nothing and yet they are priceless to the people hearing them. Are they not? I know you've had that experience. <clears throat> our words can love, they can heal, they can encourage, they can give support. The Buddha reminded us of this as well, that our words have the power to destroy or to heal, and when words are both true and kind, they can change our world. And I absolutely believe that. Every time we speak, we influence our world. We might be building it up, and maybe we're not so much doing that. Maybe we're tearing it down using them in a negative way. And our words absolutely do have an effect. The power of that effect is dependent upon the intensity of the thought and the feeling behind the words that we're using, as well as the way in which those words are spoken. A proven, measurable, scientific fact is that soothing words create the release of chemicals in our body that are soothing. And that is true for the person speaking the words and the person that's receiving those words. Now, angry words, on the other hand, are releasing those harmful fight or flight chemicals in our body, both to the speaker and to the listener. We knew that, didn't we? Even without scientific proof. Because we've all had that experience. We've all felt it. It's obvious when you're speaking to somebody with those words of loving kindness, you feel that. And they feel that too. And the same thing, if you've been, if you have spoken or have had spoken to you those harsh words, you feel that as well. You can energetically feel what's going on and what's coming from that other person. Now it's common knowledge 
that speaking words of love and encouragement to plants, for instance, helps them grow stronger and better. And if you're familiar uh, with Dr. Emoto's work with water crystals, he's proven the same thing with water. Through the 1990s, Dr. Emoto performed a series of experiments. And what he did was he observed the effects of words, prayers, music, and environment on the crystalline structure of water. And he found that human consciousness absolutely does have an effect on the molecular structure of water. Water takes on that, uh, on the resonance of the energy that's directed at it. And he actually found that through these studies that polluted water can be restored, restored through prayer and through positive visualization. Pretty amazing stuff. When water has positive energy directed at it, it forms these beautiful intricate, intricate crystals. On the other hand, if negative energy is directed at, these, at the water, the crystals come out broken. They come out tarnished and discolored. If our words have that great of an impact on plants and on water, think about the implications that the words have on us. It's big, isn't it? I mean, let's face it, we're made mostly of water, right? So with all that said, it's no wonder that Ru Ruiz's first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. When we're impeccable with our word, particularly toward ourselves, it reflects in our life and it reflects in all of our relationships. <clears throat> Many people do not realize the power of, they wor of their words because they don't really understand the harm that can be caused by speaking carelessly or by speaking thoughtlessly or even aggressively. That goes for the way we speak to ourselves as well as others. And dare I say that is even more important. So most of us are totally aware that hollering at somebody um, is certainly inappropriate and, and hurtful. However, maybe we're not aware <clears throat> excuse me, that even subtle little digs or gossip can hurt others more than we realize. And the truth is this, and in hurting someone else, we of course are hurting ourselves. They, don't you love them? They. They say you are what you eat. Well, you are what you speak as well. And that's something to really think about. Being impeccable with our word means a couple things. Avoiding gossip, avoiding lies, avoiding empty promises, any way that our words can be harmful to others. So there is one rule, and here's the rule. To say only what you mean and to realize that damage can be caused if you're not careful with what you say or just as importantly, how you say it. There's a way to kind of look at that and go, well, wait a minute, I'm going to stop myself. I'm going to stop and I'm going to think. And I'm going to ask myself three questions before I speak. Is it true? Is it loving? Is it beneficial? Those are the things that we want to think about before we do speak. The words we speak are saturated with energy. And the universe holds us accountable for those words that we speak with great intensity. That's why it's so vitally important that we monitor our self-talk. Those things we say to each other. We cannot help but become what we say we are. It's called the law of attraction, right? And we're all familiar with that. The more intensely that we speak the word of who and what we are, the more we move toward becoming that. And if we happen to own words, unkind words or degrading words that other people may say to us, if we make those words our own, guess what? We're going to move in that direction as well. So the, the words that we use on a consistent basis 
reflect our, our, our state of consciousness. And if we don't change our internal and our external language, we're going to continue to hold on to those unwanted thoughts, those unwanted experiences that we're working to get rid of, right? That we're thinking about, we don't want this. Well, focus now on what you do want, right? Not what you don't want, because that is attracting that very thing. So for instance, if you tell yourself, oh, I messed up again, I'm worthless. Guess what? You're not only affirming your present sense of self-worth, you are setting the parameters for your future worth. Because today's words become tomorrow's reality. We're creating our life. We're creative little creatures. Ruiz wrote this, it is through the word that we manifest everything. We expect our express our will, our intent, our love, and our faith. As human beings, we're very powerful um, creators, and everything that we create is based on faith. And I'm going to explain that, because it's based on faith, because when we invest all of our faith in our old beliefs and we hold on to them, that leaves us very little power to change, doesn't it? Very little room in there. It's not important whether or not those beliefs are true. We believe them. Therefore, it is true for us. Until we change it. And if we hang on to the information that we've attained so far in life, that information that we've picked up along the way and have chosen to take it on as a truth, then whatever we perceive to be that truth is going to be filtered in to make it fit into that knowledge, that information that we have. In other words, we create a personal reality that justifies our knowledge and our life mirrors that back to us, proving to us what we believe is true. Vicious cycle, is it not? If we say, I am never going to be this, then it's so. If we say, I can't do this, guess what? You're right. Whatever you believe, whatever you put that faith in, is going to be so. It's about being conscious and mindful of what we're thinking, of what we're saying, of what we want. Ruiz wrote that the word is not just a sound or a written symbol. The word is a force. It is the power you have to express and communicate, to think and thereby to create events in your life. Consider the power that you might be giving to particular words or phrases in your life. The words, by all accounts, mean absolutely nothing by themselves. The energy, the belief, the faith behind them, that's what matters. And that energy will always manifest its uh, physical equivalent. A seed carries the potential, a, a seed from a tree will carry the potential to create an entire forest. Your word carries the potential to take root in your mind and generate thought forms of like kind. Eventually your personal reality will reflect the type of seeds that have rooted in your mind. Those ideas, those thoughts that you've decided are truth. You want to become aware of that power of your words. Begin to choose your words more carefully, more deliberately, with integrity. And be careful to say what you mean with that conviction. Let's think about some of the common phrases we use in the English language. How we use phrases and words so carelessly because we've just become used to it. It's part of our um, culture. I'm getting too old for this. Anyone ever say that? Yeah. I'm sick and tired of. Mm, right? I'm dying too. I can't afford to. I mean, we, we tend to use those kinds of phrases on and on. Think about phrases that you might personally use uh, repeatedly in your own self-talk. And so I would, I think this is a great exercise to kind of pay attention to that over the next few days. And write, write the ones down that you tend to repeat. And after a few days go by, look at them and see what you're saying to yourself. Make a commitment after you look through that 
um, to change your speech, to be more mindful. It absolutely makes a difference because words have incredible power. And simply by changing our habitual vocabulary, words that we use to describe the emotions of our life can change how we think, how we feel, and how we live. Check this little fun fact out. Um, I'm not sure when this was published. However, the point is well made. According to Compton's Encyclopedia, the total number of words in the English language is around 750,000. Of that number, we habitually use 500 to 2,000, representing only one half of 1% of the language. In Roger's thesaurus, there are more than 3,000 words describing various emotions. Of those, 1,051 were words for positive emotions and 2,286 for negative emotions. Roughly twice as many negative words as positive. Isn't that amazing? The words we attach to our experience becomes our experience, regardless of whether it's objectively um, accurate or not. That part doesn't really even matter. The following quote I'm going to share is shared by um, Yehuda Berg. He said, words are singularly the most power force available to humanity. We can choose to use this force constructively with words of encouragement or destructively using words of despair. Words have energy and power with the ability to help, to heal, to hinder, to hurt, to harm, to humiliate, and to humble. See, we're always at choice with anything and everything we do. We can share the positive side or we can share the negative side. It's entirely up to us and how we want life to show up. The most important thing we can do, personal opinion, is to think before we speak. To use restraint when it's, not, when it's best not to speak. We've all been there. That's about maturity. We can learn to put a filter between our thought and our spoken word. That's an important life skill. And I found a great acronym to help us with that. It's called THINK. <coughs> True, helpful, inspiring, necessary, and kind. That's the criteria. That's when you know it's OK to speak and share. If we want to change how we're experiencing life and our relationships, it's important that we consciously choose words that we want to use, that we want reflective of what we want to see. What would happen <clears throat> if the next time you were in a situation that used to make you feel angry, instead you changed that to being annoyed? You feel the difference in that? Just the energy in those words? Or if you used a word like upset instead of enraged about a particular situation, you can feel the difference. Maybe instead of feeling worried, you could be a little concerned. Or you could need some clarification on a particular situation. We don't have to get ourselves all worked up. The labels that we put on our experience, that energy behind those labels, creates our experience. So choose your words really wisely. Choose them deliberately. Choose them with care. Say what you mean and always speak from a place of love to others and speak from a place of love especially to yourself. Pay close attention to that because the great thing about the spoken word is that we have the power to change the words we use. It's all about becoming aware. So this morning I'm going to leave you with this thought. Speaking well is a skill. Speaking mindfully is a life skill. Thank you for being here while I shared this truth as I understand it.